Good morning, everybody. And what I'd like to do is just share with you some of my experiences of working with homeless young people, but above all, to share with you how they have changed me because they have totally and radically changed me. They've turned me inside out and upside down. They've challenged my values. They've challenged the way I see Irish society. They've challenged my understanding of God. They've changed my relationship with God. They have done everything for me. And if I had to start my life again, I would do exactly the same as I've been doing for the last 40 years, because it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. Homeless young people are not all drug users or alcoholics. Uh, uh, many homeless young people don't have any of those problems, but they are invisible. We have homeless young people today. We're working with homeless young people who are in Trinity College. We're working with some who are in UCD, some who are in University of Maynooth. Uh, but they are invisible. Nobody knows they're homeless. You could have a homeless person sitting there in the midst of you, and nobody knows that they're homeless. However, the public perception of homelessness is of those homeless people that you see on the street. Uh, they're the visible uh, tip of homelessness, and they tend to have drink or, or drug problems. Some of them that we have worked with have had horrific childhoods. I was thinking of a young man, he was 12 years of age, lived with his mother and his sister. Himself and his sister were very close together. His mother was an alcoholic, and when he was 12 years of age, his mother stabbed his sister to death in front of him. Now, he just left home. We don't know where he was for five years, sleeping on the streets somewhere. Turned up at our door when he was 17, and he lived with us now for the rest of his life because he now has very serious mental health uh, problems. The, uh, another young lad, 14 years of age, same age perhaps as some of you, uh, every time he went home, his mother slammed the door in his face and said, go away, you're not wanted here. How do you cope with that? But he coped with it by taking drugs. He went to England, he died in England of a drug overdose. They rang me and said, go out and tell his parents. So I went out, knocked on the door. Mother answered the door. I said, I'm here about Paddy. And she said, go away, I don't want to know. Our young lad, 12 years of age, his mother was a drug user. And every morning before he went to school, he had to go into city center. He had to buy the heroin his mother needed for the day. And he had to come back and help her to inject it. So not surprisingly, by 15, he was injecting heroin and he was homeless. Or finally, 11-year-old knocked on my door late at night and he said, can I stay? And I said, no, you can't stay. You're only, you're only 11, I said. And anyway, you have a home to go to. Can't go home, he said. Why can't you go home, I asked him. Just can't go home. Talked to him for a little bit, discovered his alcoholic parents were sending him out every night into prostitution. And he had to come back with a certain amount of money, otherwise he'd get a beating, and he had no money that night. Young people who have had horrific childhoods. Some of them take drugs. They take drugs for a different reason why some of you guys might take drugs. Young people today will take drugs out of curiosity, see what they're like, or out of peer pressure. But these young people take drugs to forget. To forget their childhood memories, and to suppress the feelings associated with those memories, and drugs work. One young girl said it shortly before she died. She said, wouldn't it be wonderful if you could run so fast that your memories couldn't catch up? So they're running away from their memories. So what happens when they come off drugs? When they come off drugs, all those memories come flooding back to the surface and they come back with a vengeance. We had one guy came down to our detox center, came off drugs, came back to Dublin, was doing very well <clears throat> until his granny died. He went to the funeral of his granny, <clears throat> found himself sitting in the front row of the mourners beside the uncle who had abused him as a child. All those memories came back. And in the middle of that funeral mass, I saw him get up out of the bench and he literally ran down the center aisle of the church, out the front door, and the next day he killed himself. So for them, coming off drugs is hugely difficult. Drugs is only a symptom of much deeper problems. And those problems have to be addressed by counseling, by therapy, and by a huge amount of support. And what have they done for me? Done everything for me. First, they have made me very grateful for what I received. I grew up in a good home. My parents cared for me, did their best for me. And growing up, I took all that for granted till I started hearing these young people's stories. And then I realized 
just how very, very lucky I had been. And so they made me grateful to my family and grateful to God for the place God gave me in this world because life's a lottery and no one chooses where we're going to be. Second thing they've done for me <coughs> is they have taught me never to judge anybody. You can't judge anybody because you don't know what's gone on in anybody's childhood. We had one guy, 17, he was a big fellow. Every time you asked him to do something, he'd throw a punch at you. Staff in the hostel came to me and said, get rid of this fellow. This fellow's off his head. Somebody's going to get hurt. So I said, okay, I'll ask him to leave. But before I asked him to leave, I was talking to him on his own one day and he broke down crying. And he said, you know, in my home when I was growing up, it was do this, do that, or thump, 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 you got punched around the place as if you were a punch bag. And as soon as he said that, everything fell into place. When you asked him to do something, who did he see in front of him? He saw his own father in front of him. And he reacted the only way he knew how to react to his father. He threw the first punch before his father could get a punch in. And once we understood that, we were able to work with him. We didn't throw him out, lived with us three or four years, moved on then to his own accommodation. So they have taught me never to judge anybody. So we don't know what's gone on. And finally, and most importantly, they taught me what the hardest part of being homeless is. I always thought the hardest part of being homeless was not having a bed for the night, having to find a doorway or a broken down building to sleep in, but it's not. You can get used to it, it's not comfortable, but you can get used to it. What's the hardest part of being homeless? We had a guy live with us for a few years. When he was 18, he left us, went to live with his girlfriend. After about a year, they split, us, they split up and he went on to the streets because he had nowhere else to go. After a couple of months in the streets, he threw himself into the Liffey. To his dismay, he was rescued and he was brought to hospital. And I went up to see him in hospital. He said, Peter, he said, I can't go on living like this. And I said to him, what do you mean? And he said, I can't go on living knowing that nobody cares. That's the hardest part of being homeless, to know that nobody gives a damn about you. Nobody wants to know you. Everybody wants to keep you at arm's length. So people say to me, what do we do for homeless people? I say, we can give some of them accommodation. We can give some of them drug treatment. We can give some of them counseling. But what we're really trying to do is to give them the message that they are just as important and just as valuable as anybody else. And if we're not giving them that message, we may as well pack up and go home because the rest isn't worth it. It's about making homeless people feel important. It's about making them feel that they are no different from anybody else. And I suppose the final message I'd leave is, you know, when you do pass a homeless person on the street, maybe you don't want to give them money, maybe you don't have any money to give them, but at least you can say hello. Imagine sitting on O'Connell Bridge there begging, thousands of people passing you by, where are they all looking? Anywhere except at you. You're sitting there, they're passing you by as if you were invisible. How does that make you feel? So if somebody just goes up and says, hello, how are you, freezing cold? What are you doing? You're treating them like a human being. And so I always encourage people, if you're passing a homeless person, uh, just go over and say hello. It only takes 10, 15 seconds, just have a few words with them. And what are you doing? You're doing something for them that is far more important than giving them money. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Father.